is going on? No horsing around family, Colts Nation. Zach Boyd back at it again. And, guys, I've had 24 hours to kind of take a big, deep breath. And I'll be honest with you, it's not gotten a whole lot better in my mind right here. This will be my rant, my vent, my frustration. You know, topic of this is what is the Indianapolis Colts future? And I'll just start right here, and I'll just say that a lot of people, you know, have this approach. It's just one game. Frank Reich always comes back. This team always does that. And I think that's the problem internally. You know, if you want to if you want to talk about how this has all kind of come about, I wanted to know why is that? Why why as a fan base, a passionate fan base that loves winning and knows what it feels like, why have we settled for this type of of slow starts, j- just this uninspired brand of football? Well, I'll tell you where it starts. It starts at the top. In my opinion, it starts with Chris Ballard. And his, his, in my opinion, lazy approach to free agency, his constant, you know, smugness, there's arrogance that's in the room. You got to have that confidence to be a great general manager. I don't care what you're saying. I don't care who you are. You got to have a little bit of that confident arrogance. But what happens is when you're not willing to listen to the people that matter, not us necessarily. Look, we're not scouts. We're not pros. We're not coaches. We're not evaluators. We're we're content creators, right? We're just talking heads. But there's validity to some things that we say. You know, there's been neglect at key positions. You want to talk about the left tackle. You want to talk about really going out and finding, you know, the next pass rusher for the next 10, 12 years. You want to talk about the guy who's on the thumbnail, a quarterback. And that's a possibility. We could be a top five, you know, draft team this year when it comes right down to it. You know, starts with that, and then it trickles down to Frank Wright. You know, it's just one game. It's a long season. You hear it all the time, every year. We have to hear it every year because this is the way we start. We choose to hear it this way. Then the players are the same. You see their tweets come out, subtle things, you know. It's a long season. It's just one game. Just make those corrections. We'll take our medicine. I declare that I am tired of that approach. I'm sick and tired of sitting back and just waiting for a product that's been promised to me, quite frankly, to come out and be really, really good and really, really competitive. It's not early. You know, we talk about that window opening and shutting. You guys, we've got a guy in our front office that has talked us into this idea, and we've all fell for it, me included. I say no more. I say no more of that. I say no more of this. I say no more of uninspired football. You know, the worry is the the apathy with the fan base. When are we just going to tune out? When are we not going to care? I'm not so sure that we don't have apathy sitting in our own locker room. I'm not sure they care. Now, they're going to say all the right things, and they're going to do all the right things, and they're going to do all of that stuff. Um, A lot of that goes on in our locker room. A lot of talk. A lot of talk about how good this football team can be and should be. Not a lot of action. Uh, not a lot of leadership in that locker room. You're going to talk about needing a little friction in that locker room. You need a little friction from the ownership with this team, this general manager, and this head coach, and this coaching staff in general. I don't have any trust in Chris Ballard anymore. That's my own thoughts. This is not an overreaction. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, my gosh, doom and gloom. I don't care what happens this year. I don't believe that his approach ultimately wins football long-term, year in and year out. And the goal of football is to be a perennial playoff football team. That is the expectation from us. That is the expectation from the owner. A perennial playoff football team. That's what we want. That's what we desire. That's what you should all want. That's what we all deserve. This notion, this idea that we can just go out there and everything's going to be all right. Well, I think water's found its level. I think this has been so close to happening over the last several years, and I think it's just finally caught up to us. These slow starts and these slow approaches. And I don't give a damn if we go out there against Denver and win the football game. means nothing to me. Nothing to me. I want to win the games that matter. I want to win the division games. I want to have toughness 
and there's zero toughness on this football team. Now, you can go ahead and throw out some peoples out there, and, you know, I'll just tell you this right now. I've been a Colts fan since I've been seven years old, 34 years an Indianapolis Colts football fan, and I'll never stop being an Indianapolis Colts football fan. So you're not getting a fair weather for me. You're not getting a guy who's going to turn on this football team. Next year, I'm going to be recording this podcast. I'm going to be supporting this football team. Just like Thursday night, I'm going to be supporting my football team. But I'm passionate about winning, and I don't have to shut my mouth. I'm a season ticket holder. I pay to be in that stadium. I pay to be able to use my voice. And it matters. It matters to me. It should matter to you. It should matter to all of us. It should matter to those players, those coaches, that front office, that owner, everybody. It should matter. We should not be doing these podcasts and caring more about the results than the actual football team. That's a that's a that's a real problem. And I hope everybody who's listening to this understands it. And I want you to light us the hell up in these comments and just voice your opinion. Good, bad, ugly, indifferent. We don't care. That's a problem. And we've been sold this idea from Chris Ballard for far too long. And I ain't buying shit from Chris Ballard no more. It's done. You are what the record says you are. You are a mediocre general manager and you are a mediocre head coach and you are a mediocre football team. That's what you are regardless of what you say, regardless of the circumstances. I don't want to hear about Andrew Luck. I don't want to hear about all that. Chris Ballard's done every bit of this to himself. At some point, you got to make a move and you got to go get your quarterback of the future. At some point, you have to do it. It's why Buffalo did it. It's why the Chargers had to have it. It's why you see players going out and wanting to get Tua. You want to see, you see the Cleveland Browns, whether you believe in it or not, gave up so much for a Deshaun Watson because the NFL starts and stops. And if you don't have a quarterback, you don't really have a team. So regardless, this football team, this front office, this head coach, these players. I don't know how they're going to respond, but I think you wipe the the slate clean. You do. I don't want the guy making the decision if we happen to have, God forbid, a top five pick. I don't want that guy making that pick who's our general manager right now because he's led us to this point. Whether anybody wants to believe that or not, he has led us to this point. Love to hear your comments. Love to hear your reaction. Love to hear your thoughts. Guys, so so thankful for all the interaction that we've had um, over this season. But a little bit of a frustrating season, but we're still here together. We got each other, and we want to win, man. Uh, and we want to win, and we want to start this Thursday against the Denver Broncos. Live stream tomorrow at 9.15. Check us out. Till then.